During that journey, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam accompanied Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to Bayt al-Maqdis and towards the, to the heavens. And finally, a stage came up there where Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Muhammad, this is, this is it for me. I can't go, I can't proceed any further. Now it's only you, no one besides you, it's only you who can go further from here. And keep, keep on going up. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then continued his journey. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَذْنَا He was on a distance of just two bows. Or even closer than that. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى At that time Allah told His servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam things that me and you cannot understand whatever he told him. مَا أَوْحَى Whatever I told him. I told him whatever I told him. It's not something that can be expressed in words. Can be understood by this, these brains and these minds. So, أَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ He told His servant and he, he revealed to him what did he reveal to him? Ma awha, whatever he revealed to him. So now we see Jibreel alayhi salatu is stopping at that position and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam continuing. That was a physical journey. That was an indication that in this spiritual journey, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has gone much beyond Anbiya the rest of the Malaika and even Jibreel alayhi salatu wasallam. Now he's at the stage that no other creature can get to that, uh, in, uh, to that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. And this was still when he's in Makkah before the Hijrah. And he continued with that journey even after that. So of course, now we just through this we can have Little understanding of how close Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam must have been to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But still, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is looking to get closer and closer and go even higher status than what he had. And this is why as he's proceeding further and further with closeness to Allah, there is no end to it. There is no end to that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes they are infinite, there is no end to it. And therefore, closeness to Allah has no end to it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, minute by minute, second by second, is getting closer and he looks back and says, Astaghfirullah. So we don't want to stop at any stage. When a person gets satisfied and stops at certain stage, that's it. That simply means, now the downfall has stepped. That is the beginning of the downfall. Then okay, I got what I wanted. Now my iman is perfect. My iman is complete. My amal is perfect. I don't need to get any better. My my relationship with Allah is strong enough. That's it. I don't need any more. Well, I answer, no. That's it. That's the downfall of the person. In fact, if this type of thought would come into the mind, that's, that's enough for me. I really don't need any more. It may be the person falls from the same height that he was up. He, if he got to some height, he may be falling in the same speed as any object would fall from a height down to the ground. This person would come right down to the ground. So we don't want to stop at any stage. We want to continue with this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this journey to continue, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day by day has to get stronger. This connection has to establish. Each time we feel that we have weakened the connection, we have the connection is getting loose through our sins, through our deeds, then we have to come back and reconnect our souls. And connect it with the strong ropes now. With a stronger than what we had before because we know the one that was before broke very easily. As 
the scholars have said that a person who has the true fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that fear is enough to drive away thousand sins a day if thousand sins will come to him and a feeling rises up in his mind that I want to do this, I want to commit this sin this fear of Allah will drive all of those sins away. And a person who does not have that fear of Allah, the connection is very loose. Then one sin is enough to drive that fear away. Just one sin will drive that fear of Allah away from this person. All what he thought, oh, I'm really afraid of Allah, I have a couple of Allah, I'm God-fearing, I'm a true believer, this is how much I recite, this is how much I pray, this is how much I do. All of that, just one sin will take all of that away, will wash it away. So there may be a lot of a'mal, but the connection was not there. Because of not having the connection, one sin will just drive everything away. Now the person will look at himself, Oh, I thought I had a lot of taqwa. I thought I did this amal and those amal and I did so much. Here, one woman was able to take all of my iman and went away. That's it. A woman came, in five minutes, she took the whole taqwa and all of that, and in five minutes everything is gone. I just came out of Atikaf after a whole month. Fasting, avoiding sin, everything. Walked out of the door. She took everything away. The next day is the day of Eid. And we know what happens on the day of Eid. Relatives or non-relatives, everyone shaking hand with every person, men, women, mixing and all the haram. What happened to all of those ibadahs of the Ramadan? The person had just come out of so much ibadah. <laughs> How come it was washed away so fast? Now we may think, what happened to that? I just did so much ibadah. And now the person himself may not even think about it. But if a person is looking at him, this is the person who was doing so much salah, so much azkar, so much tilawah, so much of ibadah. Look at him what he's doing on the day of Eid. What happened? He did not establish that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See the beautiful lesson that these scholars have left for us, that if that connection is established, the real true fear of Allah is there, this fear of Allah will drive thousands sins away. And if the true fear is not there, the connection is not there, then one sin will drive all of this taqwa and all of this fear away. That connection is very important. Without it, there is always, the iman is always in danger. It could go, it can go any minute, any minute the person will, will lose it. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he warned against the jam, he said people will be losing their iman in no time. They talked to him, he took the iman of the person away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us in the hadith that if you see the jal, if you happen to see the jal, don't even think of going and arguing with him. Don't even try to go and argue with him. Because even if you go and argue with him, you, he may take your iman away. You may lose your iman by talking to him. Iman is so weak. One of the Sahaba, one of the Sahaba, after hearing the hadith regarding the Jal, He started saying, Ya Rasulullah, I'm really afraid of the Jal. Sahabi, he's afraid of the Jal. Why is he afraid of the Jal? He explains, he says, I heard, I heard in the hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the fitna of the Jal, the main fitna of the Jal will be through man, through the wealth. And he says, when I look at my position, my situation, my situation is like some time when I'm hungry and my wife is preparing some bread. It's difficult for me to do two rakah salah while I'm smelling the bread. 